guys, welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and today I'm going to be showing you how to put together an $850 gaming PC build step by step for 2020 and I'm joined by a special guest. Who's this? It's PC Centric. This is Marcus from the PC Centric channel and we're going to be taking you through the whole process step by step today. So buckle in, but let's dive into it. We're going to kick things off as always by installing the CPU, RAM and CPU cooler into the motherboard. And I've got to give a massive shout out to Be Quiet for sending over some parts today, sponsoring this video and making it all possible. So this is MSI's B550M mortar board. Does it make sense to go for an M80X board in an ATX case? I think it depends. Uh, the ATX case we're using is quite small so it isn't going to look too crowded and this is a really good budget option. We're going to install the RAM into the second and fourth RAM bin slots and we can do that by pulling back the clips on either side of the slot. I'm liking your use of white and black here, what was you thinking? Well everybody loves a white build but white boards are expensive so RAM. RAM it is. Next up is the CPU, this is AMD's Ryzen 3 3100 with four cores and eight threads and some pretty fast clock speeds. We're nicely covered. So to install the CPU we're going to pull the arm on the socket upwards, line the triangle here on our processor with the corresponding triangle here on the motherboard. How many people does it take to do a PC build? Normally one, but you turned up, so one and a half. No, that's why I need to go back. I do need scissors. No, oh my goodness. <laughs> Now the motherboard assembly is all complete, we're going to install it into the case. <laughs> we haven't seen this case before. No, I actually this haven't. Is incredible. This is the 500DX, and it's essentially like a high airflow case, but it's very small to mid size. You've got ARGB on the front, which, full mesh. Which, which on the Geekwatch channel is needed. ARGB is an absolute it's necessity. An absolute must. We're going to kick things off by taking off both the side panels. We've got some tempered glass on one side, some sound insulating foam, which blocks Marcus out. A design that's really set up for high airflow with lots of vents at the front, some 140mm fans included. And we've also picked up a few of these white shadow wing fans for even more airflow. Next up, you need to grab the case accessory box and this comes with all the screws and stuff. What does it say? It says accessories. This comes with all the screws and stuff we need to secure our motherboard down into place. Now that the motherboard and the fans are all in the case, I'm next up going to install the power supply. And this is the Be Quiet Pure Power 600 Watt. 600 watts, is that enough? I think that's more than enough for today's build. Today's build is going to be around the 450 mark. So this has plenty of upgradability in it as well. If your case does have bottom ventilation, then you want your power supply facing downwards so it can bring air in. And once Marcus has gone ahead and screwed that in, we're going to plug up our 4 plus 4 pin CPU power connector and then our 24 pin motherboard power cable just like so. Next up then, we're going to pop in the CPU cooler. This is the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2. It's a really great budget option, and I think it looks really, really good. Yeah, it comes in two different colours. You can get it in black or like a silver if you want to save a little bit of money. But I was really impressed with this when I used it the other day. It is near silent. Makes such a big difference over the stock. Now, the first step is to take off the black plastic pre-installed mounted hardware. Once Marcus has done that, we're then going to install these two brackets this way round alongside these spacers and screws. With the mounting hardware all installed, we then just need to pop this bar on our CPU cooler over those two brackets to secure that heatsink down into place. Next up then, we've got the penultimate component before we go ahead and install the graphics card. This is easily installed with this SSD quick mounting bracket. Woo! Specifically, this is the Kingston A400. It's a 500 gigabyte drive that is super cheap. And while it's definitely not the fastest SSD around, it's a lot quicker than any hard drive option on the market. And then all we've got to do is give it power and data with a SATA data cable and a SATA power cable. Next up, we're going to do the front panel connections and all of those cables. First up is our HD audio. This goes to the bottom left of the motherboard and has a pin blocked out, so do be careful. The front panel connectors, known as JFP1, are next up, and these go to the bottom right corner of the motherboard. They can be a little bit fiddly, and if you get them the wrong way around, don't worry. Nothing's going to explode, your system just won't turn on. Finally, we've got our two USB 3 connectors. First is our standard USB 3.0, and then I've also got 3.1 one type C and these go to the ports on the right hand side of the motherboard, one above the other. And while we're here we're also going to plug in any four or three pin fan cables just like so and our three pin addressable
adjustable RGB connector to control the, the light zone on the front of the chassis. Okay then, all that's left to do now is install the graphics card, and this is the AMD RX 5600 XT. This is always the most exciting bit, isn't it? This is going to handle all of your games, what sort of frame rates do you reckon we're talking about? So I think at 1080p this card is looking 100 FPS in some of the latest AAA titles, kind of medium to high settings, but 1440p is more than doable on a card like this as well. That's mad. That's oh, what, like oh. triple slot sort of sort of level. That's, it's two and a half slot. That's massive. Right, do you want to do the honors and remove the PCIe slots? Yeah, boy. <laughs> and in terms of slots, we just need to remove the first and second slot, not the third slot as we've just done. Which is a little bit unusual actually, but this is because we're using a micro ATX motherboard. With that being said though, that pretty much wraps it up for the build process. It looks really nice. It does indeed. All that's left to do is whack both the side panels on and then boot this machine up to see how it looks, but more importantly, how it performs. Roll, Roll the montage. <laughs> Okay then, now you've seen just how good this system looks when it's all powered up, and a big shout out to Marcus for helping with the build process, let's dive in and see exactly how it performs. I've tested this machine with some of the latest and most popular titles so we can get a really even picture of just how well it performs. First up is Call of Duty's Warzone, one of the more difficult games on my list to run today, and at 1080p high settings, I'm happy to report over 100 FPS, pretty much at all times, around that 120 to 130 mark on average. Of course, Call of Duty's Battle Royale Warzone mode doesn't actually support ray tracing, so you're not missing out either uh, by having an AMD graphics card over, say, an RTX 2060 in this build. Visually, the game looks fantastic. It goes without saying there was no stuttering, no lag, no screen tearing, nothing like that. And at over 100 FPS, it performs really, really well. Talking of great performance, Forza's Horizon 4 is next up. On high and ultra settings at 1440p, you're looking around 120 to 130 frames per second on average. That was tested using the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode, which means if you want to go back to some of my other builds, you can easily compare and contrast and see just how well this system performs in comparison. Forza Horizon 4 is super duper fun, and I'm looking forward to kind of Forza Horizon 5 next uh, when the next generation consoles come out. As I say, though, really high over 100 FPS at 14. 40p and visually it looks fantastic. CSGO is next up, it's one of the easier games today to run but a massively popular title even after all these years and if I don't include it you guys go mental, you want to know where it is. At 1440p high settings you're looking over 200 frames per second and that was tested offline with bots and the reason I've done that is because this is actually more intensive than playing online, which means your performance actually might even be slightly better. I tested GTA 5 next up, and on the high settings preset at 1440p, you're looking at a 75 frames per second average. I've said this before and I'll say it again, GTA 5 with settings is really, really temperamental. So if you're kind of not quite getting the results you want, have a fiddle about, uh, change stuff like anti-aliasing, render distance and reflections, and you should see a huge increase in frame rate. I've also tested Apex Legends, of course, the latest season six release, and at 1080p high settings, you're looking around 140 frames per second, which is absolutely insane. That means you kind of high frame rate esports gamers with your 144 hertz monitors are more than covered here. And once again, visually the game looked outstanding. Finally today then, the last game to wrap things off is Overwatch. My personal favourite title on the list today, a close second behind Forza Horizon 4. And at 1440p high settings, you're looking between 120 and, wait for it, 190 frames per second. The deviation is huge, but it never really went at all below 110 FPS, so you can rest assured that it's going to perform really, really well on a more budget-oriented system like this. With that being said, though, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today's build. If you did enjoy it, make sure to drop a like rating and get subscribed if you want to see more from me. I will, of course, link Marcus's channel in the description and in the card section, and a big thanks for his help in the build process of today's video. Thank you very much for watching, though, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.